All right, I've been meaning to make this video for a little while. I had a few people that uh, had asked me about it, so I figured I'd get to making it. We're gonna be talking about the RCBS primer pocket swager. Um, I don't know if you can see this or not. <clears throat> That's a little bit of light on the subject. This is the RCBS primer pocket swager. Before I had this, um, I actually used the little Lee Chamfer de Burr tool. And I would just take it, put it in there, and just give it a couple of turns and turn out the uh, um, little primer pocket crimp. And that works great, you know, no problem. If you've, that's all you got. I've used it for several thousand rounds. The only problem is, is when you're actually taking that out, you're making that hole a little bit bigger. So while it's easier for the primer primer to go in the pocket, it's also easier for this to come back out, which is the whole reason why the military um, actually crimp these in so that the primer po primer will not come out of the pocket and get into the uh, mechanical firearm machine gun whatever they, that the military uses now most of your commercial um, brass does not have the uh, primer pocket that is crimped where this Lake City brass does sorry for the lighting out here <clears throat> it's terrible but it is what it is that's where you need to be seeing anyways all right, so to give you a little rundown, I actually have had two primers back out on me inside the firearm when I was shooting, and actually the primer came out of the primer pocket, went down into the action of the gun, and <clears throat> ended up uh, getting down inside my trigger, causing it to be uh, a single shot. The, the trigger wouldn't even reset. You'd have to actually pull the charging handle back every time to actually reset the trigger and both times I took it out I actually found a little primer down inside there so hence the swage tool pretty easy to <clears throat> pretty easy to use I'm um, not going to go through all the back this up where you can see not going to go through all the specifics it comes with your instructions which are great. Uh, and you have your die. It comes with the, I actually have the, the small um, post rod, whatever you want to call it in here, set up for doing 223. Um, you use the same one for like 9mm. Anything small primer brass, <clears throat> pistol brass, or rifle brass. And you just have to use your instructions set it up. I'm not going to tell you how to do that because this one's already set up. If you look and you can see how the uh, rod actually sticks out a little bit. I, ha I have a, uh, a quick change bushing on here so I can take it in and out. But you can see how that sticks out. Some people was asking me was it supposed to stick out on this end or was it supposed to stick out further on the top basically that's how I have mine set up with the bushing it sticks out about yay much and you can see where the die is inside there I guess about a sixteenth of an inch further it would stick out if you wasn't using a die but also you have your die like I said you have the large rod if you want to do, you know, 308, or if you had some uh, pistol, large, large primer pistol brass that you needed to take out, and it actually comes with these little inserts that I just dropped in the floor, but that's okay. They're rugged. You have the one for the large which has got a little bit bigger little uh, 
um, cylinder that sticks off of it and then you have the small for this one will be the one you would use for like 223 um, 9mm and also you get a case stripper and I'll show you how I set this up because first time I did it I did it backwards try and get to get that in there the best I can hold on let me move the camera a little bit closer all right and see if I can't get in here around the camera still have you have be able to see the press all right so basically what you want to do is you want to raise this up and you want to take your shell holder out I'm doing 223 and also you want to take your uh, primer insert out because if not when this is going up it'll actually bottom out on your um, case stripper and then you'll be wondering why your uh, wondering why your uh, cases won't come off because it won't let it go down far enough so basically you just pop in your shell holder put your case stripper over it you can see how that works basically when it goes down pushes up against here which in turn as you go down it pulls the brass out of it take your die like I said I have this one set up on a quick change die system so I love the breech block now we got some 223 brass um, basically all you do is take it take the head of the uh, brass and stick it up onto the rod I always hold it up like so and bring my ram down bring the handle down which pulls the press up and basically when you have it set up just before I bottom out on the press it'll be almost all the way up in there and then I just push it in if you see that ain't coming out just by normal finger pressure hence the case stripper and once you get a little feel for it it's not really all that bad located up on the rod raise your uh, ram almost all the way up to where to hold it and then you just pop them off And you'll just do all that, like I said, after you've uh, done it a few hundred times. You'll get pretty proficient at it. One thing you don't want to do is try and load it on here and go up. Because you see, it's already contacting, it's already contacting the uh, die. And if you was to go from here, you'd actually destroy your piece of brass. So always make sure that you load it up on there. Go at least more than halfway. Make sure you're on there. And just pop her off. Just like so. Like I said, you'll get a feel for it. Do that. Getting some more ladder loads done for some uh, 62 grain cast AR shells I'll show you those if you're interested this is what I'm actually doing the brass for you'll see I've actually got some, I don't even know if I can see, raise the camera back out. This is basically what you, what I'm working with. It's a 62 grain projectile, hard cast, that I powder coated. So, but that's really not what the video is about. It's about the RCBS. 
swage die primer pocket swager and I think Dylan makes one that's a whole lot easier it's got just a little lever you put the brass on flip it down and a handle that you just pull down do it really fast no problem like I said once you get used to this this is not at all difficult you can use a universal decapper you can use the RCBS swage tool and to me for the price these I don't think I paid maybe $25, $30 for it. I'd have to look up the price on it. Hit up Midway. Places like that. The majority of the stuff I do use is Lee. But Lee, that I know of, doesn't make a primer pocket player. So, well, that's pretty much all there is to swage and primer pockets. Like I said, you get used to it. You can go through and do a pretty good bit. That was the Lake City. You can really feel the difference in some of these. Like in your commercial, most of the time your commercial brass doesn't need it. Well, that must have been a piece of commercial. Yep, Remington Peters. That's Lake City. Let's see. That's basically all it is to it. Um, to me, that's the most economical way because I like to have, um, when it goes in, it reshapes the primer pocket instead of just trimming out that area. And like I said, then you have to worry about primers popping out. And um, I didn't think it was a big deal using the Lee tool. And it does work, you know, because all you're doing is allowing yourself to put the primer in. But and like I said, I had probably two out of a thousand that popped out. But those two got down in my trigger, so two different times. I had to tear my gun completely apart, take the trigger out, get the primer out, put everything back together, clean it. And uh, I just, I'm not really fond of that, so that's why I like the swaging tool. I do this and it gives me just an extra little peace of mind. Because most of the time I make ammo like this, it's for plinking. I'm not really dependent on my life for it. One day I might, but I really don't want to have to worry about my ammo. So, there you go. Um, I know Dub Dub, you was asking about it. And uh, he was asking about how much resistance and everything. It's pretty simple. Takes just about that much for Not a whole lot. You're not going to be pulling your press off the table with that. But alright, like I said, if you need to remove some uh, military crimp, that's my, my vote. The primer pocket tool for my RCBS. And this is actually the primer pocket swager 2. I don't know what the one's like. Never used it. Alright. I'm out of here.